So welcome everyone. My name is Laura Stevens and I'm an organizer for the Sierra Club Beyond Coal campaign. We're a member organization of the Power Past Coal Coalition, which has come together to throw this event, this press event today. Um, so this includes Coos Waterkeeper, Oregon Physicians for Social Responsibility, Columbia Riverkeeper, Friends of the Gorge, Beyond Toxics, Greenpeace, Climate Solutions, and Earth Justice, among, among many other organizations. And, and I'd like to thank everyone um, that's here today for coming from all reaches of the state um, to tell Governor Kitzhaber you want him to reject dirty coal. The Oregon is at a crossroads. Down one path, we can continue to invest in clean energy. We can continue to make sure that communities have access to clean air and clean water and um, healthy communities. Down a dark, darker path, multinational coal companies like Texas-based Kinder Morgan and Australian-based Amber Energy. They want to trek coal through our backyards, down our rivers, and export it to Asia, polluting our air and water along the way. Overall, Big Coal has six proposed coal export terminals in the Pacific Northwest that total uh, 146 million tons of coal every year. That's right. And uh, to put that in perspective, Oregon's only coal plant, Boardman, burns about two to three million tons of coal per year. So what this means for Oregon is huge <laughs> polluting coal trains and barges passing through our communities, through the Columbia River Gorge, through Portland, through Columbia County on the lower Columbia River, through Eugene, Salem, right here, um, and along the Oregon coast and out Coos Bay. If we export dirty coal, we import dirty air. Diesel pollution and toxic coal dust that falls off of trains, barges, or ships will pollute our air and water, worsen asthma, lung disease, and other health problems. Massive coal trains will snarl traffic, cut our towns in half, and delay emergency service access. Dirty coal would diminish property values, hurt farms, main street businesses, drive away better kinds of development. And, um, and of course, coal is a leading source of climate disruption pollution. Big Coal knows that the more that we know about how dirty and destructive these projects are, the more that we will fight them. And so they have been working hard to keep the public in the dark and to keep public input at the bare minimum. So it's time to shed light on the truth. Yeah. <laughs> We're now going to hear from four individuals that have come from four corners of the state who will speak more to how coal exports would directly impact them and their communities. Um, so first, we're going to hear from Peter Cornelison, right here. Uh, Peter is a former business owner and a former council member from Hood River. And um, Peter also spends a lot of his time in the Columbia River Gorge recreating, hiking, and windsurfing um, in the beautiful Columbia River Gorge. And he's currently um, he currently works for Friends of the Gorge, and he will be speaking now about how uh, dozens of coal trains and coal barges would seriously impact the Columbia River Gorge. As Laura said, my name is Peter Cornelison. I live in Hood River in the beautiful Columbia River Gorge. The gorge is one of the last best places in North America. In 1986, it was given federal protection as a national scenic area to ensure the Columbia Gorge would remain a national treasure forever. But our national treasure is under, under a big threat. Their proposal to ship 146 million tons of dirty black coal a year through the Columbia Gorge. The problem with coal is, the moral is, it's dirty no matter whether you handle it or whether you're around it. As the easiest route through the Cascade Mountains, all of this coal would come through the Columbia Gorge. And with it, create a multitude of problems. I'd like to describe just four of these problems to you today. The first is that mile-long, slow-moving coal trains will snarl traffic, cutting our towns in half and delaying emergency services like fire and police. This will happen day and night. 
with a train passing by roughly every 30 to 45 minutes, 24-7 for years. Barges carrying coal will impact our wind sports industry and the tribal and sport fisheries. The Yakima Nation has already come out strongly against coal exports by barge. Dirty coal trains will diminish property values and hurt farms and small businesses. Air pollution from diesel exhaust and coal dust will pollute our air. Diesel exhaust from coal trains contains over 40 toxic substances and coal dust has numerous heavy metals. The sticky coal dust will foul our agricultural produce, cherries, pears, apples from the gorge. Coal trains also have a higher risk for derailing and crashing. Every summer we have wildfires now by the trains that are going through the gorge and there have been several train derailments in the last 10 years. This will only increase with more train traffic. Three years ago, National Geographic Traveler magazine ranked the gorge as one of the top 10 international sustainable tourist destinations. Blessed with scenery, stewardship, and landscapes of international significance, we have visitors coming to the gorge from all over the world. But development proposals like coal exports threaten our quality of life, harming not only local residents, but our vibrant tourist economy. Decisions will soon be made by state and federal agencies whether or not to allow coal exports. I call on Governor Kitzhaber today to deny coal exports through our state and through the Columbia Gorge. Let's protect our Northwest heritage as a clean, healthy, and coal-free environment. That's right. Whoa. Now we're going to hear from Duncan McKenzie, who's an engineer and a resident of Rainier, Oregon, about an hour northwest of Portland. Uh, Duncan has spoken out about the needs for transportation safety issues to be addressed in Rainier and surrounding communities in Columbia County. Rainier faces coal taint towns dividing downtown, coal barges passing its waterfront, and traffic disruptions from an additional coal export proposal across the, across the Columbia River in, in Longview, Washington. Um, so let's hear it for, it for Duncan. Thank you, Laura. Just to correct one thing, I am not an engineer, I'm an industrial designer. Okay, I don't want to get in trouble with 672 RS. <laughs> Many of you may not know the town of Rainier. It was a town that was built around the railroad. The railroad comes right down the center of A Street. And we have diagonal parking that you have to be careful to look around and make sure that the train isn't coming straight down the street before you pull out. I've done quite a bit of research with regard to the distances we have in Rainier between crossings and it's going to make an impact on our lives. There's no real wrong side of the tracks in Rainier. Uh, the bank and the post office are on the water side. And as I sit there for eight minutes looking at the trains go by or wonder if I can get to another crossing, that's not going to work because all of the crossings will be blocked for about four and a half minutes as the train meanders through Rainier at 10 miles an hour. There's another aspect Peter spoke to, and that's the coal dust. Powder River coal is a little bit different from what you saw him crumbling there. It's even more crumbly when it dries out. And from that crumbly is more dust. I grew up in a very small town in northwestern Montana. You may have heard of it, Libby. Um, we had a different type of dust there, tremolite, which comes from zonalite. Tremolite makes coal dust look actually good. <laughs> the other big problem that we had in Libby was we went through a very large hydroelectric plant development on the Kootenai River. And those of you who have been around those developments knows that there is a very large boom-bust cycle that is attendant to a whole lot of jobs, the incessant drumbeat of jobs sounding in your ear sounds like a good thing and then those people and families move on leaving somewhat overdeveloped schools 
services that now have no people to use them, etc. These projects bring attendant risks, risks that I'm not sure any of us really fully comprehend yet, and that's why if Governor Kitzhaber does not choose to simply deny coal, we need an overarching programmatic view of what all of these proposals are going to bring to the gorge, to the area downstream, to Oregon and Washington in general. Because to deny the fact that, yes, we have this proposal, and this proposal, and these proposals, and its whole impact is egregiously stupid. So thank you for your time. I appreciate your support. All of us appreciate each other's support. Again, let's not do this. Thank you, Duncan. We're now going to hear from David Petrie, who is the executive director of Coos Waterkeeper from Coos Bay. He's also a tribal member. So give it up for David Petrie. Whoa. Thank you, Laura. Coos Waterkeeper is the only cross-cultural sanctioned chapter of Waterkeeper Alliance. So, hello, my name is David Petrie. I'm the executive director and waterkeeper at Coos Waterkeeper. I'm a husband, father, and grandfather, and been a resident of the community of Coos Bay, North Bend for 40 years. I'm also an enrolled member of the Confederated Tribes of Coos, Lower Quas, Sayusla Indians, and the past cultural director. In each of these capacities, I come today to call on Governor Kitzhopper to keep Oregon free from the imminent threats posed to our health, environment, and economic viability by the coal export industry. Coos Waterkeeper's mission is to evaluate the biological health of the Coos watershed and document the ecological impact of 160 years of industrial development on our natural environment. Our mission further includes protecting the environment through education, advocacy, research, and planning using the best available science coupled with indigenous knowledge me, and traditional values of our local native tribes. Economic development opportunities that elevate the quality of life for all of our citizens and our environment are within our grasp. We do not have to tie our future to the dirtiest of 19th century fossil fuels. Indeed, we must not for our own health and for that of future generations. The ecosystem of the Coos Bay area support many of the industries and recreational opportunities Oregon is known for. Our excellent shellfish and salmon fisheries, beautiful Sunset Bay State Park, and the Oregon Dunes National Recreation Area, people used to working close to the land. Turning Oregon into a conveyor belt for dirty, dangerous coal is not a path forward for our home. As an indigenous Oregonian, I am concerned about all of the proposed coal export projects. Mile-long coal trains will snarl, snarl traffic and increase emergency response times, preclude sustainable uses of the state's rail systems, and leave a trail of toxic coal dust across numerous streams, rivers, and diesel fields across our state. Moreover, much of the pollution that will result from this coal being burned in Asia will travel back to Oregon polluting our air and water and contaminating our fish with toxic mercury. Oregonians have an opportunity to alter the course of fossil fuel consumption and stop global climate change. I call on Governor Kitzhaber as a fellow Oregonian, a father, a physician, and our state's highest elected official to say no to coal. Oregon should move forward as a green state, friendly to renewable energy development and sustainable homegrown industry. Coal is a fuel of the past. Coal has no place in Oregon's future. Whoa. Thank you. Thank you so much, David. Now we'll hear from uh, Dr. Andrew Harris, who's an ophthalmologist at Oregon Health Sciences University and a founder of the Global Health Training Program at OHSU. He's a graduate of Yale University and, Virginia Med and Virginia Medical School and a board member of Oregon Physicians for Social Responsibility. 
I moved to Oregon in 1974 because of its incredible natural beauty and also its environmentally progressive thinking. It's here in Salem that I raised uh, four, that I raised three children and have four grandchildren, two of them who live in Portland. It's important for me to see that my granddaughters, age three and one, grow up in a safe, healthy, clean atmosphere, uh, one that promotes outdoor play and healthy living. I'm worried that dirty coal export terminals threatens their health. Coal is the dirtiest, most unhealthy uh, fuel available, with the exception of uh, nuclear energy and radioactive waste. The plans to export coal to Asia could bring mile-long trains, as you've heard, from Montana and Wyoming, uh, and increase barge traffic down through the Columbia Gorge. The result will be increased diesel uh, emissions, which is a known carcinogen. Coal dust itself is a health concern for people with allergies, asthma, bronchitis, emphysema, heart problems like congestive heart failure and heart attacks. Why would we want to promote an industry which is harmful to its workers and to everyone along the line, from the mine to the train to the barge to the ports? Should we be concerned that our coal burned in Asian power plants will contribute to poor health for Asians? Absolutely. But let's be clear that emissions from coal burned in Asia will also cause serious illness right here at home. Several recent studies have showed that powerful spring trade winds can carry Asian pollution into the atmosphere over North America. Some of the imported pollution uh, descends to the surface where it affects ground level concentrations of ozone, mercury, sulfur, and other toxic compounds. Ground level ozone can cause severe respiratory conditions, including asthma in sensitive individuals. A 2008 study found that Asian emissions of mercury contribute 18% of springtime mercury concentrations right here at Mount Bachelor in our backyard. Snowpack uh, runoff ends up in our rivers and lakes where the mercury um, enters the stream of the uh, fish we eat. Pregnant women and children are particularly vulnerable to the toxic effects of mercury. Mercury is a potent neurotoxin that damages the developing brains of children and fetuses. It is estimated that between 300,000 and 600,000 children are born in the United States each year with dangerous levels of mercury in their bodies, putting them at heightened risk for developmental disorders, mental retardation, seizures, and disturbances of gait and speech. This is particularly concerning given the increasing uh, incidence of autism and other neurologic problems among U.S. children. From a public health standpoint, shipping coal overseas is comparable to the exportation of cigarettes. As Americans curtail their smoking addiction and reduce the burning of coal, tobacco and coal mining companies simply switch markets and promote sales of their toxic products overseas. Another health care issue of, uh, of great importance is, of course, global climate change. Rising oceans, prolonged droughts, stronger hurricanes, and more intense heat waves are examples of climate change that lead to food shortages, heat stroke, and death and injury from natural disasters. The dislocation of people from floods and drought leads to outbreaks of pest and waterborne illnesses like cholera. Children, the poor, the elderly, and anyone with a weakened immune system is, partic is particularly vulnerable to these toxic effects. So today I call on Governor Kitzhaber, not just as a leader of this state, but as a fellow physician, to call for a comprehensive environmental impact statement and a comprehensive health impact statement. The price is too high for Oregon families, and the governor can ensure that right questions are asked before serious harm is done to the health of our residents and our environment. Why would Oregon, a state which prides itself on sustainable, renewable energy, want to have a role in fostering dirty coal energy and harmful pollution? To take an active role in exporting coal at a time that we promote ourselves as a leader in clean energy will only give this uh, state a black eye. Thank you. So as you can see, there are numerous reasons 
while it, why coal export is the wrong choice for Oregon. And uh, in just one month, we collected comments on just one coal export proposal on the Columbia River. 7,000 people wrote in to Governor Kitzhaber and other leaders saying no to coal export. And you can see folks around here holding these stacks of comments from citizens from across the state who are standing with us today. But the good news is we don't have to let big coal take us down this dark and dirty path of coal export. We can do better than dirty coal. We can continue to invest in clean local energy sources like wind and solar. We can continue to prioritize clean air, clean water, and create an environment for Main Street businesses and ecotourism to thrive. Under, Governor's Kitsau uh, under Governor Kitsaba's leadership, Oregon has led the nation in building a clean energy economy and protecting the health of families and communities. So we call on Governor Kitzhaber to continue to lead Oregon down this path of clean air, clean water, and healthy communities, and decisively reject dirty coal. Yeah. That's right. At the bare minimum, we need a clear plan for a robust public debate, a full review of the environmental, economic, and health impacts, and transparency on all fronts. Ultimately, when the light is shed on the truth of what's going on, the right choice for Oregon will be clear and is clear that the Oregon way is the coal-free way. Yeah. Yeah. And with a quick chant, no coal exports. 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 No coal exports.